you know, I wish I kind of would have put this in last week's video, our predictions. I left it out. I was kind of short on time on editing. However, I had them losing to the Falcons. You, I believe your prediction was 30 to 17. And I, I mean, I could pull it up and put it in this video, even just so fans can see it or, or listeners can see it. But you were very eerily close, man. 37 to 17. So, uh, yeah. How do you feel about that Atlanta game and that performance by the Bears and Justin Fields? I'm going to say we come out and we're just shy of a win. I don't think we get blown out. I think we lose by three points, 27-24. And I think we smoke the Falcons and then we lose to the Packers. I think we're seeing like 31-17. It was kind of what I expected. And um, unfortunately, the Bears, you know, if they had just put it together like one more win this season, they'd be in a playoff push and we'd probably be playing the Packers for the last playoff spot. Um, it's a little bit too little too late, but that's the story of the season, and it's okay. I mean, I think even all things considered and how we expected the season to go, me and you, we this is exactly what we expected, and at this point, it's pushing past it, right? Like, it, we expected seven wins, and they were going to be ugly, and now it's it kind of came together the way that you would ideally want it to, which is finishing strong at the end of the year, setting a foundation for the year after and uh, hopefully not disrupting any chemistry for the year, you know, to come. I still want to beat Green Bay so bad because it's just going to feel good playing spoiler. And this Bears team right now reminds me of last year's Detroit team. I think the game against Green Bay is going to be more than just a feel good win. I almost think it's a necessary win. I keep saying this. The one thing that this team's shown me is inconsistency. Well, here's your chance to fix that, right? Like we didn't have many back-to-back -back victories for a long time. We were able to put some together this year, right? However, three in a row, we have not done in a very long time. Green Bay's playing for something. They're in a playoff hunt and this game is very meaningful to them. I kept saying, hey, I, I can't really truly make a choice yet because there's still three games left. There's still two games left. And, I, and all these games matter. And I think this game matters a ton because if you could go in there, if you could go to their stadium and come out with a victory, it's not only going to be a feel good thing, but it's going to check a lot of the boxes of, Hey, this team is capable. They're showing it. They're proving it to us. Right. If he comes out flat, and we see another, you know, mediocre performance with a fumble in there as well. Wouldn't that just leave you scratching your head a little bit more? Yes and no. Fields done anything to you or to any like GM out there that says, you know what, these last three games really showed me that I want this guy. I don't think any GM was convinced or unconvinced in Justin Fields in the last two games, two to three games. However, there is, like what you're saying, a court of public opinion. And if you come out and take a dump against Green Bay, then yeah, it's going to look bad on Fields. It's going to look bad on, hey, maybe we do need a restart. Maybe we do need to refresh. But if Fields comes out and just absolutely dominates the Packers in Lambeau and beats the crap out of them, then it's one of those things of, like, how do you get rid of this guy? At the end of the day, you need to take a look at the whole body of work. And like I said, it takes more than one season, and we're at the end of year three. And one thing that you mentioned to me, which I didn't really necessarily know about, and I think most fans don't mention this, or at least from all the comments I see on Twitter and things like that, uh, when it comes to finances, right? Um, this is the rule for the fifth-year option from the NFL, right? Teams must exercise the fifth-year option on the player following their third NFL season. And you mentioned this to me. So this choice has to be made. You have um, the window for picking up the option is from the end of the regular season to an appointed time in the beginning of May, just after the NFL draft. So you now have, after this next game, a couple months to sit there and decide as GM, as Ryan Poles, do I pick up Fields' as fifth-year option? So as a fan base, from our fan point of view, I was saying, hey, you got another year with him, and then you can pick up a fifth-year option. No, that's not the case. That choice needs to be made now. 
um, this performance against Green Bay coming up will really help that sway one way or another as far as a more out long-term outlook. Like I said, I think there's a lot more riding on this game than we truly think. Um, just because we're not in a playoff hunt or anything, there's still a lot of stuff outside of that that needs to get determined. There's a lot of questions when it comes to fields. And I think helping solidify his position in any which way is is huge. So I really, truly hope he comes out and has a great performance so that they can decide to pick up his fifth-year option and do that. But as of right now, would you pick up the fifth-year option on fields? Um, I don't know. I feel like I've been forced to choose a side and I don't know which side I want to choose. And that's why I don't have to do his job. I don't have to do Ryan Poles job. Like I, I think it's a completely unenviable job in the NFL right now. It might be one of the worst because I, th I had this thought run through my head today where what if Carolina was just middle of the pack? Right. And what if Carolina just had the 10th overall pick and you had the ninth? And this would, like, I mean, the the discussion of how to solidify this team around Justin Fields would be so dead set, right? So really what we're talking about is the opportunity. And we've discussed the opportunity of having the first overall pick multiple years in a row. Really all it is is an opportunity. It's very, very rare that the first overall pick ever works out and that if it's a quarterback, it's the best quarterback in that draft. Additionally, we've seen and we've had we have evidence. We have examples of how Ryan Pulse thinks, how he sees value. He just did it. He just traded out of the first overall pick. He's not going to fall in love with a guy just because he thinks everyone else likes him. He had no interest in Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, Will Levis, none of them. He had Anthony Richardson, none of them. He had no interest in it and he said, "Let's ride it out and build a team." So I feel like I've been forced to choose a side because of how the internet talks and it's everything's always, you know, uh, identity politics. If you disagree with me, you hate me. I, I could care less if you disagree with me. It's my opinion. So my opinion is that you do need to build any football team through the draft with multiple first round picks and multiple darts at the dartboard, like you always say. I love your phrase of darts for the dartboard. I could have one dart, or I could have five darts and be a little bit further. I'd rather have those five. I'm more confident in my five than my one. So my choice is going to be pick up the fifth-year option, ride it out, keep playing him. I still think Fields is really good. And I think if you fail on him a little too early, you might have a missed opportunity. However, you know, you could see Caleb Williams on the on the Commanders or on the Giants next year throwing for 300 yards a game. It's a crapshoot right now, but who knows? My personal opinion is keep fields and pick up three first-round picks plus a player. And I think your team is going to be much better, and you're going to be much scarier every single week somebody plays you next year. Because even if Caleb Williams is the best possible outcome, which we've never seen rookie QBs be that dominant. I got to say, I 100% agree. Um, I think you have to go into this offseason and pick up that fifth-year option because that money, I mean, you're going to pay him $23 million in his fifth year. So you ride out this next year with him, right? And at the end of this next year, if you're not happy with him, I'm not sure exactly how this works. You could still trade him. Some other team can still pick up most of that salary if not all of it right so you you're you're not necessarily handicapping yourself to a super expensive quarterback room you still have the potential to trade them away and go out and get a veteran if that's what you want to do or you still have the um potential to keep them for one year at 23 million while you draft another quarterback and groom them for a year so i i think that just opens up more opportunities for you i mean these quarterbacks in this league are so expensive and uh, you know the thing is, if he balls out in year four, he's going to want a brand new contract. And so you're going to wind up having to pay him more than that anyway, if he does good. Right. So I think, I think it's a no brainer. I think you do have to pick up this fifth year option.